come to worship for January the 16th. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Today is the second Sunday after Epiphany. As you've come to know over the years, although we observe the Epiphany on one Sunday per year, we celebrate an entire season in the church here called the Sundays after the Epiphany. You also know that the word Epiphany means to reveal. Each Sunday in the season of Epiphany, a little more of Jesus and his mission on earth is revealed for us to see. Today, we get a glimpse of the love of Jesus for his people. He attends the wedding of some very close friends, and he turns water into wine. Kind of a little foretaste of the feast that is to come, so to speak. And not any wine but the very best wine. He saves the best for last, and he does the same for you today. That's what we'll be pondering this morning. We don't have any birthdays this week of which we're aware. If there is someone celebrating a birthday this week, please do let me know. We do have one anniversary, and we want to wish Sylvia and Gary Johnston A happy anniversary on January the 18th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's our gospel music worship service this morning. Uh, So let's begin with singing our opening song, How Long Has It Been? My friends in Christ, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Together we say, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. Let us, there confess, let us therefore confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we live surrounded by the darkness of sin. Our lives are spent in the darkness of the fallen world by our own sin in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done as well as the good we have failed to do. Deliver us from this darkness and grant us your forgiveness by the light of your Son's saving death on the cross and the power of his resurrection. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, opens heaven before us and brings us life again. By the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. From the, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We join together in the hymn of praise. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet 
until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall, shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empower empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone j water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in the sermon song, I Love to Tell the Story.
The text this morning is taken from the gospel you heard a moment ago. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. They were all there, of course. Mary, Jesus' mother, Jesus himself, and with him, his new disciples. They were, after all, new, you'll recall. This was the very first miracle or sign of Jesus. So they were there new with him. This was also the third day. The same day, and you'll recall this from the creation account, the same day, the third day, that the word calls forth vegetation, including, of all things, the grape from the earth. And God said, let the earth spread vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The third day, the, th the day of fulfillment and resurrection. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up again. Scripturally speaking, the third day is an important day. Lots of big, significant things happen. Now keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this. Now let's talk about the where. And in real estate, in the Gospels, as in real estate, location, location, location is everything. This wedding doesn't take place anywhere important like Jerusalem, the seat of the temple, or in Rome, the political power center. Instead, it happens in Cana, the backwards region of Galilee, way up in the north country. It was reviled, a backwater, a place where religious nut bars were running around. The people in darkness have seen a great light, that's how the prophet Isaiah put it. On those dwelling in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. In the circle of the Gentiles, Galilee of the nations. That's where Jesus first shows his glory, at Cana in Galilee. Now you've got to admit, the setting is perfect. It's all set up to be filled with meaning. The location, the timing, and even the event which was a wedding. What setting could be more filled with meaning than a wedding? You'll recall that God used the relationship between a bridegroom and bride to picture his relationship with Israel. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. But this wedding has a disaster in the making. They ran out of wine. This was a social error that on a scale of 1 to 10 was a 20. The feast is going on and on and now they run out of wine. Perhaps there were guests in attendance who didn't bother sending in the RSVP response. Maybe it was even the disciples of Jesus. And being a good mother, Mary decides to say something to her son. They have no wine, she says to her son Jesus. Now you have to admit, Jesus' response is rather terse here. He is perhaps even appearing to be flippant, flippant to her and the situation. What's that to us, woman? My hour has not yet come. This is a rather unkind way of reacting. At first blush, the response of Jesus to his mother seems, what's the kindest thing to say? Perhaps bad-mannered. However, upon closer inspection, this is not the case. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's more along the lines of being hyper-respectful, not disrespectful. He does not address her as mother. He addresses her rather as woman. Now the culture in that time, this word woman 
was a sign of ultimate respect and was in fact used as a formal expression of love. In fact, the next time Jesus uses this manner of speaking to his mother is at the cross where he commends her to the care of John. Remember how he said it? Woman, behold your son. My hour is not yet come. His hour is the hour of his glory, the hour of his death. This is why Jesus came. He didn't come to fix all the little things, like a wedding party that ran out of wine too soon, but to die as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In his death, he takes care of everything else as well. Even in this sign-changing water, for washing to the wine, for wedding, and it cost Jesus his life. Miracles are not without cost. These signs and miracles show us who Jesus is. There were six large stone jars at the feast. Six, think about it, that's just one short of seven awaiting fulfillment. These were set aside for the Jewish rites of purification. They were specially set aside for the wedding guests. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons of water for a total of about 180 gallons. Fill the jars to the brim, Jesus says. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He came to fill them up with his sinless life and perfect obedience as living water that came from heaven. And then he says, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. That's it. That's all. No other words, no other actions, nothing. Not even a little finger lifted. And then there was wine. But not any wine, not even any wine-flavored water either. Wine. Wine of a certain vintage. The good stuff. The really, 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 really good wine. It is then said, everyone serves the good wine first. Then when people have drunk freely, the lesser wine is served. A more accurate translation of what honestly was said could be more like this. Everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, which could mean have freely drunk and now are a few sheets to the wind, then the lesser wine is served. And then the deal maker. You have kept the good wine until now. God kept the best for last, having now promised to pour out the finest vintage at the end. All of what happened at this wedding which ends up being a sign showing the world that this was the Messiah, also then is one big sign pointing to the cross where all is accomplished and finished. The day, the hour, and the use of the word woman that Jesus uses to address Mary. The vintage wine is Jesus himself. He was poured out for the life of the world through his death in the blood and water that poured out from his side that fills the chalice with wine from heaven and the baptismal font with the water that washes to life. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's the significance of this sign. By transforming washing water into wedding wine, he reveals this to us. One greater than Moses was present. One greater than the law and the religion of the Old Covenant was here. The law of Moses, symbolized by the six stone waters of water for washing, can't bring joy to the wedding feast. It can clean hands, yes, but not pure and joy-filled hearts. Besides all that, 
Who wants to drink bath water anyway? The law just can't save us. God truly did end up saving the very best for the very last. For now. For you. The law came through Moses. How does the scripture say it? But grace and truth through Jesus Christ. And for you, my dear friends in Christ, as believers who have been baptized, you are privileged to taste and see that the Lord is good to sample his vintage and have a little foretaste of the marriage feast to come that has no end and goes on into forever. You are a part of it and in on this good news. Just like the surprised guests at Cana in Galilee who got to drink wine from heaven that day because Jesus was with them. And Cana in Galilee, and on the cross at Calvary, and here, whenever we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion in his body and blood, Jesus reveals his glory for faith. And he is here now to feed you with the great bread of his body, to gladden your heart with the wine of his blood, for the forgiveness of your sins, to bring you joy overflowing and unending, so that you too might believe in him and live. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in him forever. Amen. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you manifested your glory in the sign at Cana. As you restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood, pour out your grace in abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your truth in the person of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, you rule this world by your power. Give to our civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given them from above, let it be in accord with your good design for our world and not the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke for the good of their citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, we bring before you the sick, and here we bring before you your servants, Linda Anweiler, who is hospitalized, and Norm Buker, awaiting the next steps in his cancer treatment. Watch over and comfort them in the midst of all they face. Be also with those who are distressed and in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that our lives are hidden in Christ for our strength and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction and blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We join together in a closing song. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this worship service. Several announcements I'd like to share with you. First of all, our Faith Lutheran Church Board of Directors is meeting on Monday, January 17th to make a decision with respect to the worship services on January 23rd and beyond. As soon as the decision has been made, we will post it on the church website, which is www.faithforyou.ca. You may also call the church voicemail and listen to the updated message there for the same information. 
The church phone number is 306-221-9575. Please note that the luncheon scheduled for Thursday, January 20th has been changed from an in-person event to a Zoom chat session starting at 1 p.m. An invitation link for that Zoom chat is included in the emailing you received with the January 16th worship service link. You want to be there as the topic is Senior Fraud Awareness. Sergeant Lamb of the Saskatoon Police Service will be leading the discussion. Lutheran Church Canada is meeting in convention this summer. Elections to various offices will be taking place shortly, and nominations for these various positions are being requested. Please be sure to read the information provided to you in the email you receive each week, or on the church website, or in the bulletin. Lastly, if there is anything any of you need, please call me, Pastor Rudy, on my cell phone at 306-221-9575, or send me an email to rudy.pastu at sastel.net. God be with you all as we shelter in Christ. Go in peace. Amen.